This is Burundi, a small landlocked country in East Africa. As of 2023, Burundi is the poorest country in the world. The truth is, most African countries are known to be poor. But Burundi is poor even by African standards. The country currently has a GDP of $3.6 billion and a GDP per capita of only $294. To put these numbers into perspective, an average Burundian who works from January to December only receives $294 per year, making it $24 per month. In comparison, Mauritius, a tiny African country, is 16 times smaller than Burundi in size and 11 times smaller in population, has a GDP per capita of more than $8,000. To further illustrate how insanely poor Burundi is, Nagud Soares, who is the 10th richest man in Africa, has a net worth of $3.7 billion, which makes him richer than Burundi. As for Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangordi, he is four times richer than Burundi. With more than 80% of its population living below the poverty line, the situation in Burundi seems to be getting worse. From political instability to poor infrastructures and shantytowns, there seems to be no hope for Burundi. Many people blame geography for Burundi's misfortune, but its neighbor Rwanda has the same geography, but is relatively doing well. So why is Burundi's situation different? In this video, we shall take a deep dive into how Burundi became insanely poor. But before we dive in, if this is your first time on the channel, please take a moment and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Conflicts and poor leadership. Today's fundamental root causes of poverty in Burundi can be traced back to its history of conflict and leadership. Burundi has experienced a repeated pattern of civil disputes since gaining independence from Belgium in 1962. Throughout five civil wars, the nation has seen more than 500,000 fatalities and produced around 1 million refugees. This ongoing turmoil has resulted in a volatile political climate. Additionally, the two most recent civil wars, one that raged from 1993 to 2005 and another that broke out in 2015 after President Pierre Nkurunziza's contested third-term election, have had a disastrous impact on the economy of Burundi. Burundi has been in a political crisis since 2015 when President Pierre Nkurunziza announced plans to run for a third term in office. This move was seen as a violation of the country's constitution by the opposition, as it was believed that it could undo the progress made to end the country's civil war. The civil war, which lasted for over a decade, resulted in the deaths of thousands of people and caused widespread destruction. The tensions created by this political crisis have significantly impacted Burundi's economy. Burundi has a population of just over 11 million people, similar to that of its neighbor Rwanda. However, the economies of these two countries are vastly different. Both countries gained independence from Belgium in 1962, and since then, ethnic conflicts between Hutus and Tutsis have plagued both countries. In Rwanda, since 2000, Paul Kagame has been in power and has been able to bring stability to the country and improve its economy. In contrast, Burundi's economy is struggling, and the government has been unable to recover from the destruction caused by the civil war. This nation is significantly reliant on foreign assistance, both bilateral and multilateral. The nation's total debt is expected to reach $1.92 billion in 2023. Various initiatives, such as those started in July 1986 by the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, were tried in the past to support the economy. In addition to reforming the coffee sector, these proposals attempted to liberalize imports, lower trade barriers, diversify exports, and overhaul the foreign exchange system. However, these strategies haven't been able to revive the nation's economy. The situation in Burundi serves as a reminder of how crucial stability and effective governance are to a nation's economic growth. According to many analysts, efforts to assist developing nations through World Bank and IMF initiatives frequently have the opposite effect and leave the nations in worse shape than when they started. The same thing happened in Burundi. The already failing economy created even more inter-ethnic conflict when the government, which was primarily run by the Tutsi tribe, failed to execute the promised improvements. As a result, the prolonged instability forced the INF to postpone its intentions to assist Burundi in 1993. Despite recent choices by several Western nations to reduce funding in an effort to pressure the government to reform, 
This strategy is not aiding in the short-term reduction of poverty. However, organizations like the World Food Program, WFP, and UNICEF give people in Burundi hope that, with time and support from others, they may be able to escape the cycle of poverty. Burundi still has a long way to go regarding the change, and knowledge of the nation's past is necessary to comprehend its present situation. No country can ever prosper through violence or war. Burundi, just like its neighbor Rwanda, has had a difficult past. In 1972, there was an attempt by the Hutus to overthrow the Tutsi government, which led to a lot of violence and the deaths of around 100,000 to 300,000 Hutus. Unfortunately, similar violence occurred again in 1988, resulting in another 5,000 to 50,000 deaths. The first president from the Hutu tribe was assassinated in a Tutsi military coup in 1993. It's crucial to remember that violence and conflict cannot lead to national prosperity. Conflicts in Burundi have had a detrimental impact on agriculture, which serves as the mainstay of the earthquakes. The country agriculture employs approximately 90% of the population. Between 1994 and 2006, the number of people living in poverty increased due to the civil conflict from 48% to 67%. Families' livelihoods have also been negatively impacted by high food costs, which included a 28% increase in 2007 to 2008. This has rendered them more susceptible to disasters, natural disasters including droughts, floods, earthquakes, and the consequences of climate change. The war has also hindered the manufacturing sector. For example, the civil war between 1993 and 2005 led to a decline in manufacturing production from 1993 and 1997. There was a yearly decline of 13% on average. Additionally, most conflict economies are transient. Due to resources being diverted to pay for the war, a lack of finance, and a lack of moral norms, Post-war economies are frequently left with wrecked infrastructure and a decimated productive sector, even after wars are over. These elements contributed to the reduction of foreign investment in the Burundian economy from 1993 to 2005. The gross investment rate decreased from 17.5% in 1990 to just 5.6% in 1998. Burundi's economy has been severely harmed by the ongoing cycle of conflict and bloodshed, which has increased the rate of poverty in the country. Lack of government support The state of Burundi has a long history of meddling in the economy, undermining economic freedom, and weakening entrepreneurial activities. The government interferes with the economy by subsidizing fuel and electricity, as well as through state-owned enterprises and agriculture support programs. In addition, the government has been known to seize private property from citizens, further hampering economic activity. This interference has hurt the economy making it difficult for entrepreneurs to flourish and making it harder for people to own and manage their property. All of this has resulted in a less dynamic economy and a weakened entrepreneurial spirit. For the economy to flourish, the government needs to reduce its involvement in the economy and allow for more economic freedom and entrepreneurial activities. The government's lack of economic planning and management is a significant hindrance to economic growth. Without proper economic planning and management, the government cannot effectively allocate resources, leading to inefficient utilization of resources. This, in turn, leads to a lack of economic development as resources are not being used to their fullest potential. Furthermore, without effective economic planning and management, the government cannot implement proactive policies that can help promote economic growth. This is because it is difficult to predict and anticipate the economy's needs without proper financial planning. As a result, the government is unable to cater to its citizens. Land and food insecurity Burundi is located in Africa and does not have access to the sea. In fact, the number of people living in Burundi is constantly growing. One of the most significant issues in Burundi is the disagreement over land. The country has too many people and not enough land. The land is significant for Burundians, since most of them are farmers. The land is crucial for survival and is the reason for many issues such as drought and hunger. Most of the people in Burundi, 89%, rely on farming to feed their families. But since the land is very scarce, not all can acquire three meals a day. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization has determined that a significant portion of Burundi's population, 1.7 million people, is facing chronic food insecurity due to a variety of factors. One of the main reasons is the country's high population growth rate, which is more than double the global average. 
Burundian women have a high fertility rate, with an average of 6.3 children per woman, further straining the country's resources. Many people in Burundi rely on subsistence farming, but due to a lack of land and coherent land ownership policies, they struggle to grow enough food to meet their needs. Despite the country's lack of natural resources, experts argue that this is not a reason for poverty and suggest that foreign investment in certain areas could help improve the situation without negatively impacting the local population. According to a 1998 study from Entiki Prioritaire, farmers in Burundi's rural areas must travel for a significant amount of time to access markets and grocery stores. Furthermore, these markets are only available once a week in many rural areas, and there are no storage facilities for perishable goods. These factors discourage farmers from producing a surplus, as they primarily farm to sustain themselves rather than generate wealth. Additionally, the study found that Burundian farmers consume most of their products, which is becoming increasingly difficult to acquire and improve due to the pressure of a rapidly growing population and limited land resources. Corruption Corruption is the number one reason why a lot of countries are poor, Burundi among them. Just like in other poor countries, in Burundi, corruption is pervasive and has become entrenched in the government's operations. This is also a key issue that has contributed to her poverty. It is used by the ruling party, the National Council for the Defense of Democracy, forces for the defense of democracy, to maintain power. This is due to the insufficient anti-corruption procedures in place, as individuals in charge of monitoring and combating corruption at both the national and local levels are likewise corrupt. Because it might be hazardous for these controllers to act against prominent local leaders, they frequently opt for informal arrangements instead, which leads to increased corruption. The CNDDFDD's hold on power and the significant risk for individuals who report corruption to authorities, both from colleagues and security services, has created a sense of immunity among government officials and local leaders affiliated with the party. The CNDDFDD's influence in the decision-making of public servants makes it difficult for them to speak out against corrupt practices. Public officials prioritize loyalty to the party and its values over following formal rules and regulations. The low level of trust of Burundian citizens in their government leads them to accept bribes from those in positions of authority. As the government has lost credibility with the public, people tend to rely on personal connections rather than public institutions. This highlights the fact that accessing public services and interacting with government employees is not always based on formal rights and privileges. Instead, building relationships with government employees helps to mitigate uncertainty and gain access to services. As a result, traditional rules are influenced by social norms. This means that government employees use their social status and formal authority to carry out their duties and exploit their privileges for personal gain. Drought in Food Burundi has been hit hard by natural disasters recently. Droughts, heavy rain, floods, and hailstorms have caused much damage. It has largely affected the communities there, destroying homes, disrupting livelihoods, and making it even harder for people to get enough food and nutrition. And it's not just the immediate damage. These disasters also decrease land productivity and increase crop pests, which makes it hard for people to recover. It's a complicated situation, especially in already crowded areas. It's making it hard for people to access food and resources. So there you have it, a glimpse into the complex and multifaceted reasons why Burundi is still struggling with poverty. From systemic corruption to a lack of trust in government institutions, it's clear that there are no easy solutions to this issue. But as we learn more about the root causes of poverty in Burundi, we can work towards creating sustainable change and a brighter future for its citizens. It's important to remember that the people of Burundi are not just numbers and statistics. They are human beings with hopes, dreams, and the right to live a life free from poverty. Let's continue to shed light on this issue and work towards a more just and equitable world for all. I hope you learned something from this video. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comment section and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.